Should we start? Yeah, one second. All right, so the second to last talk, um, um, Domen is going to talk about NixOS. Uh, I think it's a very interesting topic, a bit more exotic than the, uh, most of the topics that we've had today. Um, before he starts, I wanted to quickly uh, uh, let everyone know that there is a config management camp in uh, Ghent. Uh, two days uh, after the after FOSDEM, so it's on Monday and Tuesday. Unfortunately, it's totally full, so for this year, you're uh, out of luck if you don't have a, a seat reserved already. Um, but it's uh, it's going to be a great uh, conference, uh, a two-day conference with uh, um, basically all the configuration management uh, tools, uh, all the community is going to be there. Um, as someone said today, it'll probably be the only time or one of the very few times that you'll see um, uh, both the uh, the people who started CF Engine, uh, Puppet, and Chef uh, talk at the same conference, uh, all keynoting. So uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, for now, Domen is going to talk about uh, NixOS. I'm curious to see what he has to say. So uh, take it away. All right, let's get started. So a little bit about my background. Um, I'm a Python JavaScript developer, and I've used Gen2 for about eight years and. I've participated in Google Summer of Code trying to auto-generate Python packages. Uh, and I'm a NixOS user for about a year now. And this will become relevant later. I have no prior experience with functional languages. So before, before we go and talk about a, a Linux distribution, we have to rethink um, the package management, right? So um, this is where Nix comes in. It's a standalone stand so package manager, so you can install it basically onto any, any distribution. Um, it's a DSL. It's lazy evaluated. That's, that's a very important uh, feature uh, and property that you will see later. Uh, untyped and purely functional language. Uh, we, because this, there is a little bit um, Nix the package manager and Nix the language we 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 call Nix expressions the the lang the, the files and the, the language that we write and the Nix is the package manager and uh, it tries to be minimal to have minimal dependencies so it's really easy to compile it from source if you want to do so um, it's it's portable as I said and you know the, I I don't know if that's the first release but that's the fir the first one listed on the website so in 2004. Um, <coughs> It's written by El Codostra, and there's like a dozen of, of scientific papers uh, published on the Nix side that is, are the, like the ter theoretic base for, for the Nix and, and uh, um, what's built on top of it. So we're rethinking the package management, and if, if you think about how, how currently our distributions work, they would go into the file system and try to find headers there in, in a very um, um, Funny way because it breaks a lot of times, right? It, 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 they will go into directly like user include and try to find the correct headers, headers, and that will break when you update some of the packages. Um, so there is a set of problems that are um, called dependency hell, and there is like a wiki page which lists all, all of those problems that arise uh, from dependency hell that we have today, and. Um, Another motivation is to have really reproducible builds, right? So if I copy the instructions to another machine and run it, it we should get the exact same result. Um, so, so the idea behind Nix is apply functional language uh, model to the, to the packaging, right? So a package is actually an output of some function and all of those functions, all of those inputs to the functions are the instructions how this package is affected. Um, so, so, so this is, for example, we have a, a slash nix slash store with all the packages that you have in your Linux distributions are stored. And there is a, a SHA-1 prefixed and then the name and the version. And inside, that, inside this directory, this is basically the prefix where you install the packages. Uh, so inside you have uh, directories like bin, lib, share and so on. And uh, Nix store is immutable, it's mounted as read-only, so you, you cannot modify it. So the idea is that when it's actually the package is built and stored inside the Nix store, you cannot modify it anymore. That's, that's the way we ensure that it is really an output of the function that you specified in your Nix package. Um, so, so for the Nix to work, there is a, um, 
a term current purity and that basically means that we are sure that the output is affected only by the inputs of the packaging function. So nothing else should affect this package, right? And at the language level, this is solved by the way that we are using a functional language, so there is no state, um, no, no SWAT effects. But on the level of a Linux distribution, we have to take a lot of steps to make sure and some of them can't even be solved and some of them are on ongoing effort, right? So, for example, there is no user, there is no bin, so th there is no these global uh, uh, folders on your Linux distribution because um, we don't want that to affect those packages that we prefix into the Nix store, right? Um, there is also, also, we build packages in change root so that we are sure that they don't have uh, access to the, to the file system. Um, so the, the store is immutable. So for example, one of the uh, impurities is a lot of times code will have hard-coded bin bash, right? So that's again global. We want, to, we want to patch it so it points out to the exactly bash version that we are building uh, this package and the bash is a dependency, right? Um, so, and then network, for example, we only allow network access when, when you download software and when you actually test uh, and do other stuff. Um, and build and so on, there is no, no network uh, configured, right? Um, we have patch elf that will patch uh, proprietary software binaries and it will set the interpreter and the error path so we can also make sure that the binary uh, software points to the correct um, to the correct uh, Nick store uh, packages. Um, and there is this quote for documentation that will tell you how actually we figure out what are the, the build dependencies and the runtime dependencies. So we, so actually the the output is is searched for the for the Nix path output stores, and that's then then that way we know on which packages of the build all the build inputs the package depends on the runtime, right? Uh, you you will think that this is probably wrong, but it works very well. We, there are zero problems that I've seen at least in the practice with this approach. Uh, and this is of course possible because of this uh, uh, idea of purity. So there are also impurities. For example, network. A lot of times people will write tests for their packet, for their uh, software that will need network access. So that's in those cases we just disable those tests because there is no way to ensure that the network is a result of the input uh, instructions to the build of the package, right? It's something that is not deterministic. Um, and for example, sometimes it will happen that the parallel builds of, of uh, something will, fa will fail because uh, the source code needs to be fixed, right? That's also something that Nix cannot fix. Um, so, and we have this con concept of standard environment, which are the very minimal set of tools like the, the GCC and uh, GNU set and so on that you need always when you package uh, software. That's uh, the minimal set of uh, like packages that you need. Mm. And on OS X, we actually use the OS X tools because uh, it's more convenient. And there is actually a ticket now to improve this. Um, in the future. So there's also this idea to have deterministic binaries, so you will see about uh, this hash, uh, what it means, that when we prefix the package name, but uh, basically this is the hash of all the inputs uh, to, to the function that will instructs how to package this software, right? Um, and it's not, the, so the source is not the input, so, uh, and also the, the binary blob is not the input. Um, but we could extend this if we actually remove the impurities in the um, in the binary output. So you know, sometimes they w people would store timestamps in the the, bi the binary um, blob. And uh, for example, in the Python, we have Python compiled files, and we patch Python to not include the timestamps. Um, so, but this is this is an ongoing effort. It's it's completely we don't have like uh, deterministic binaries yet. Um, and of course, like I said before, we patch software that has a coded path to the to the um, root. So this is I don't know if you actually see good. 
but this is like a, an example of an Nginx, uh, how we package it. So at the top, this is a function, and the inputs to the, 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 the parameters to the functions are the standard environment, uh, the two fetch uh, functions, and then the, the dependencies that we will um, pass on. Uh, and the make the derivation on the standard environment is the, the function that does the heavy lifting. So that's the, the actually the function that will do all these uh, uh, phases and execute and package and store it into the uh, Nick store. Um, so as I've said before, if you remember, there was like this hash before the, the name and the version. And actually the hash is calculated from all of those inputs to this function. Uh, Except for, from the meta uh, parameter, which is irrelevant for the for the output, because if you change like a description of GCC, it shouldn't recompile the whole tree of what depends on GCC, right? So, and inside there you see uh, a fetch URL um, function, and that's that's another way, uh, the, another type of how Nix uh, does the, the hashing, and it's called output fixed output. So we know the hash, which is the scha in up front, right? So we don't need to 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 uh, actually hash all the inputs because we already know what is the 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 crypt uh, the crypto uh, output uh, the crypt hash of the of the package, and then the fetch URL will actually out the output of fetch URL function is actually the path to the Nick store where this tarball is uh, actually downloaded. Um, and if you can imagine, the build inputs specifies the dependencies and those provides, uh, provide headers uh, and lips and so on. And so if any of those will, will change uh, the, input, uh, the inputs, also the Nginx uh, will be, the Nginx hash will change. So it will go and uh, recompile and it will get the new prefix. Um, so there's, I just put there configure flags and so on to see that we have, th this function accepts quite a lot of parameters that you can affect. Uh, but th uh, there are two more that I would uh, mention. One is builder, which is actually the bash script that takes care of all the building. And in the bash script we have phases like you're normally used, like build phase and install phase. And you can actually override here at this function those phases or add a pre-phase or post-phase and so on. So, so when purity actually works, so that means that we've, we've removed all the impurities, we can actually have a distribution that has source and binary packages. So if you think about it, we, we have this hash that actually uniquely identifies all the inputs to this package. And if we have a build farm, which we do for NixOS, and we build a package, uh, on the build farm, then you could use this as a replacement for, for, the, for the build function. So before Nix actually builds something, it will go and f try to find a su substitute, so something that already provides a binary package for this hash. Uh, so if I go and install Nginx now, it will, go, it will download the binary blob, but if I go and modify any of the parameters to the Nginx, then it will go and compile it from source, because the hash will change. So, so then comes the question of how do we get an actual environment? We have this, we have this uh, prefix stored, uh, package software stored in prefix in Nixstore, and how do we actually get to, uh, to, the, to the environment, right? So, uh, there you see uh, a package called user env, and that's where all the, the packages will link into when you install them. Um, and, and from that point, from that on, the, the, the symlink from the Nix profiles will point to the user environment. Um, and as you can see, we keep, a his we keep a history of what you change. So if you install a package or if you uninstall a package, we keep a history because that's, that's the Nix design brings us this benefit that we can actually have a history and Nix provides rollbacks. So you can actually roll back uh, if you install a package and something is broken or you update, you can roll back to a previous, um, to previous state. Uh, and then those profiles uh, generations that we call them, a history, point to the Nix profile 
and every user can have a different profile or actually you can even generate a profile on demand for your project so uh, this actually replaces uh, user space tools like in Python we have virtual environments so on uh, and this is like a, a package management level uh, vir virtual environment right so you can actually put a, a set of packages that are only specific for your pro project and if you upgrade any other profile or install a package in other profile this will not affect the other profiles so uh, they are safe right um, so uh, and then if you think about Nix is Nix is also atomic so that means in the middle of an upgrade or installing if if it shuts down um, if your power shuts down uh, the changes won't be affected because the last step is that this symlink to the profile is meant and symlink is in Unix atomic by itself so that's when everything is built and configured and put into the Nix store when that switch is is done then actually you have the new environment activated right um, then when you think about garbage collection and how we uninstall packages when you actually uninstall a package it will just un it will just remove the scene link from your profile it will not actually go and remove it from the store uh, so that means that we we need a concept of ga garbage collection and it will collect those packages that are no longer referenced anywhere uh, so you could uh, because imagine if you're changing the inputs to different Firefox uh, uh, builds, then you could have multiple Firefoxes in your Nix store, but y maybe you don't want uh, you don't have them uh, installed in your profile. So uh, then then the garbage collection will say, okay, it's not referenced by anything else. Let's let's uh, delete it. So of course the co the cost here is file system hierarchy standard. We we kind of we still have the bin and and lib and so on, but we don't have the the user uh, folders. Um, and this also solves the dependency hell, right? So you can have different packages that depend on different versions of OpenSSL. Doesn't matter, right? They're stored in the Nix store and they're just li uh, linked to different versions of libs uh, of um, open SSL so or this is a very bad way to advertise how to get started with Nix but it's a really cool way to uh, to express it in three lines I don't recommend to actually run it so download the script first and you know see it, check out the contents but um, then you source into the the, the Nix um, environment and you can actually go and install packages and you can do this on whatever Linux distribution or OS 6 or FreeBSD if you want uh, and if you want to uninstall it just remove the slash nix and all the profiles that it created which is normally just one uh, where your user profile so NixOS is basically a generalization of the nix package manager and if you think about it all like we don't have to do that much to get a Linux uh, distribution on top of that so if we store packages in the Nix store we can also store the configuration files right that's actually a simplification of a package right so so Nix has this system profile which is uh, the NixOS profile um, so it's when you upgrade NixOS you will upgrade the system profile and so on uh, and of course then we need some configuration for the system and this is the declarative configuration that you'll see mm, and if, think, if you think about how NixOS work it's different to Puppet for example if you say in Puppet ensure uh, packages install it will go into the machine and inspect if it's installed and if it's not then it will install it right so that's stateful that's code that needs to work uh, and it needs to cover the edge cases but with Nix this comes out of the out of the box right uh, out of the design of the, the, the language and the system that we're using so this is uh, an example of configuration of a system and you declare a grub device and file system and then enable the SSH daemon and here I show for example how to configure Moon in, in a few lines of, of code so if you want to install it basically you you create a partition you format it mount it 
generate the config, edit, sneak size, and start reboot, and you have your system with whatever you put in your configuration. Uh, and when you book on the grub menu, you will see a history of, of your profiles, like the, the profile generation. So if something goes wrong when the system boots, you can actually go and take the old, the old uh, profile uh, that actu actually worked, right? So just to quickly go how to write then an XS module. This is the, the package write text is the function that will actually store the, the file into the Nick store. So this is like a complement to the to the make derivation function. Uh, and it's lazy evaluated, so this is not called. As you see, we already referenced the cfg.config, which is not defined, so that will get uh, evaluated uh, actually when it's uh, when it's referenced. And this is how you just define what options the, mo the mo Nixos module provides. And here you say Nginx enable, which package we will use, and what config uh, will be used for the Nginx. And in Nixos we have we use systemd um, because it really suits the the, the, the thinking and the way Nix works. Um, so there we have a, a pre pre start script that will uh, start everything. I'll configure everything and then the actual uh, uh, execution so that so there when you see nginx that's actually the path to the prefix of the nginx where it's packaged uh, and then it will pass the config file and the state directory um, and at, at the top you see that it makes an nginx available uh, as a installed on the system and then you would use it something like this right so um, just um, Enable Nginx, and what we do actually here is this is some kind of similar to the to the use flags in Gentoo, right? Um, you can have like optional uh, uh, behavior, and uh, the, the Nginx is actually here a function that we use that we saw at, at the beginning, and we can pass parameters to it, right? So we could have like a parameter enable RTMP, and if you turn it to true then it would actually um, download uh, the, the module and configure, configure it and build Nginx with it. But that means that you won't use the binary package anymore because you change the inputs to the function, right? Um, <coughs> and when you make changes to the, your configuration file, you, you run Nixos rebuild switch and that will activate uh, the, the changes. There is also Nixos rebuild test that will actually activate it, but on the next reboot it will go to the previous uh, on the previous uh, generation, so it will not actually uh, persist. Uh, and there's also build VM, so it will actually build a virtual machine, uh, like a virtual box, and it will configure everything inside, so you can actually see if if it's working right. So this is the build farm. We all the packages are built. Is it uh, okay? Mm. So we b we all like we, we we have packages stored on GitHub and on I I don't know th th three hundred seconds or something is the interval and Hydro will pull the changes and build the packages and provide the the binary packages for you right. So um, here here is like the history of those builds and you can see how many new packages succeed or how many fail. And we also have tests, so in order that Nixos channel is actually updated, all those tests need to pass um, to make sure that at least something is working. Um, and then as a last step, we have Nixops, and this, this is like deploying Nixos to the cloud and uh, provisioning. Um, so we have currently some backends uh, for backends implemented, but you know, of course, more could be added. Um, and this is a quick introduction. So install it with Nix, and then you define a machine, which is a function of a config and packages. And you, for example, here reconfigure Apache, 
uh, and and Nixops has this separation of the physical and logical part. So the 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 physical is the for example this uh, this time we will deploy to VirtualBox and we just say the target environment is VirtualBox, and then we say create paste those two files and name it trivial and then deploy and this will actually create a VirtualBox machine, um, configure everything and fire it up and you have activated. Uh, Virtual box and configured with the packages and. Yeah, we're out of time. Maybe we can answer one or two questions. I have two or three more slides. Okay. Can I quit? Uh, so then you could have like a production version which would which would deploy to actual machine on by, on some IP, and you you deploy it the same way, just provide a different name. Uh, and we had a Nixos sprint in Slovenia uh, this summer, and I hope that uh, last summer, and I hope we will have it this year again. Uh, it was forged by Logic Blocks and Shadowflow.net, and that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Domen, what was your name? Domen, was that your name? Domen. Thank you very much. Um, I, I have one quick question. Is anyone using uh, NixOS in production? Do you know? Oh, we have one. <laughs> okay. That, that was uh, the main question that I have. It, it's, it looks quite interesting. I'll uh, go and uh, check it out a little bit more. Um, we have uh, one more uh, talk left, uh, and then it's... Uh, all right. You can do a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. It's not a question, a very quick observation, and I've just checked this is, uh, this is um, already public domain information. Okay. Um, the uh, sim-linked hashed ID is how Amazon's Alright, cool. Alright. Yeah,